to another day in the shop. Today we have another 2005 Ford F-150 5.4 liter three valve that needs spark plugs. It's got about 80 some thousand miles on it and they're original. So like I said in the other video, 2016, these plugs are still coming in. It's amazing, the original design is still on these engines. Uh, today we're gonna try a different method, a method that's very popular. I've tried this before, but not nearly as hot as this engine is. This engine just drove for over an hour, and it's nice and hot, obviously. A nice hot soak's going on right now. So today we're gonna pull them out while the carbon on the tip of the spark plug is softened, and we're gonna use a very powerful mini stubby impact like this one right here. That way I can get to all eight, eight cylinders, no sweat, and I'll be able to zip them right out of there. The idea is the carbon softened by the heat and then the impact is so powerful and fast, it just zips them right out of there before they even know it and they can't have a chance to separate. Um, so, I don't know. We're gonna try in the front cylinders. I'll give you a nice good close-up shot of that and see how well it works and then I'll just do the rest of them on my own time. Uh, but I'll be able to show at least the, the front four cylinders on there and give you an idea how well this method works. Okay, here we go. We're going to, of course, clean the whole area with compressed air. And you can see why. All right, so we're gonna start getting some of this stuff out of the way. Uh, hoses, vacuum lines, electrical connectors, stuff like that. So we can work in the area and attack these spark plugs dead on. That's the key here. And now this takes too long to get off of here. Just simply unclip everything and get it out of the way. Look at that, it's looking better already. Okay, so pull this one off. I pull the injectors, the coils obviously, all these connectors off the front two cylinders here. And this one. Let's get it out of there. And then get in here and pull these screws. They're seven millimeter that hold the coils in. Impact to make short work of those. We're gonna try these front, two front cylinders before, you know, while they're nice and hot. Uh, that way, you have the best chance of coming out of there. So once the, the plugs are out, um, quick look down the cylinders there. We're going to clean the heck out of the area here. And I mean, if there's dirt caked in here, I mean, move your, use your air wand to scrape it while you're blowing. Now what I use is a half inch, six or three inch extension, and then we're gonna go down, use a reducer that goes down to three eighths, which will, of course, attach to our, our 916 specialized spark plug socket, just for these. And that way, when we're impacting them, this you know, extension is not gonna, just gonna flex and lose all power. We're gonna be able to transfer a little bit better. Here we go. Wish me luck. Let's get it on there. And we'll get up in here and make sure we're hitting it dead on. Like so. Just like that. Now, this may not be fair. You see there's not a lot of um, uh, corrosion on, I mean, uh, carbon on there, but these are definitely original, just like the guy said. And I'll show an example at the end. Basically, these ones are colder, and the new ones are hotter. And I'll show you a difference. These are definitely original. All right, it's out. 
no breakage. Now, this next step is controversial. Controversial, sorry. What I do at this point is I put the air wand into that cylinder and I blow out the cylinder and the threads and you'll see why. Yeah, that rust that gathers over the years, it can actually cause issues with uh, putting a new plug back in and you do not want any issues going back in. You want nice, tight, and seated and torqued properly. And just in case I didn't get everything perfect, uh, and there's a little piece that, a little rock or pebble or grain of sand that went down in here, this will help extract it out of the cylinder itself. And that's it. And then you put that plug in there right away before you do go on to the next cylinder. That way it's plugged off. Okay, your new plug, hopefully you'll be able to see this. It looks a little bright on the camera there. But you want to have anti-seize on the tip here that sticks into the cylinder head. They usually get stuck. You want that to have anti-seize. Don't go down to the ground strap here where you can potentially, you know, get it on the porcelain and all that. You don't want that, just the actual tip here. Also, you see the uh, how white or how much more porcelain is showing here compared to the original. Let me get the other one. There we go. You see how much porcelain is showing on the new one? That usually indicates, that's usually a design of a hotter plug compared to a colder plug over here. Now early in 05, when these first came out and all that 04, they had a problem with high speed misfires due to these plugs. So these are the revised plugs and it has something to do with this, the, that, them being hotter. You can see there's a major difference in the amount of porcelain that's showing on there. So anti-seize here, nickel anti-seize, high temp stuff, so it actually works uh, and can handle the temps. And then I put a little bit in the threads because I don't trust the plating that's on these anymore, uh, on these plugs. So I just put a real small amount and let it work itself in. And we're gonna put this in by hand. And the other reason is, you see how dry those threads were with the rust and all that? Me putting a little bit of anti-seize, I mean a very small amount on the threads, helps it work in. You have dry threads, you have potential for misthreading it on here. This way, you got a little bit on there, a little bit of lubrication. I can feel it's threading in all the way and there's no problems. Potential you have with using the impact, pulling these out when the, the aluminum cylinder head is hot, is you can damage the threads. Um, so this will give you a really good idea if something happened or not. Because I just screwed it all the way in by hand, having the threads cleaned and a little bit of lubrication, like I said. At this point, we can go ahead and torque these down. Now what I'm gonna do is leave this plug um, just screwed in tight like that by hand. I'm gonna start doing the other cylinders while they're hot. And we'll just torque the whole bank together all at once. And I'll put links to you know the latest spark plugs and all that and everything I used here, the the stubby impact and the anti-seize, the correct anti-seize and all that, so you guys have a reference. Let's try this one real quick. It's the last one I could do on camera. Okay, here we go. Dead on. Awesome. Yeah, look at this one. Um, hopefully you can see that. Look at the uh, the amount of gap that's in there. It's huge, the gap is huge. So this thing's gonna run a lot better as soon as he gets it back. He's gonna be very happy with this truck when we're done here. Besides that, you just literally repeat each cylinder. Now what a lot of guys do is they do these two front ones here on each bank, okay? Get them out and they start the truck and they run it again or even drive it again and get the, the cylinder head nice and hot again. With this stubby impact though, I'm hoping I can do all of these before it gets um, you know, too cooled down. So hopefully this gives you a good general idea of exactly how this is done using this method. The most important aspect is to 
hit that spark plug dead on so you can zip it right out of there without side loading. It's very, very important. And then you can just take them out and this is a real quick process from that point forward. I'll put links down below to everything I use, the tools, the spark plugs, all that good stuff so that you guys know what's the latest and greatest stuff out there to make it go smoothly and get the job done and go out and enjoy your Ford once again.